make sure that my microphone on. I had to check to make sure the microphone. I had to check to make sure the microphone wasn't muted, and of course it was. So here we go. It's Mr. Jackson's peanut butter hour. Time for us to talk. It's Mr. Jackson's peanut butter hour. Whether you like it or not. It's time for us to all enjoy a little spoonful of joy. Peanut butter hour. Yeah, that's not the actual theme song, but um, today is a special day where we are going to be talking about making music together. So um, this would be normally our creative writing club. And instead of it being creative writing club, because it's Thursday, uh, what we're going to do is uh, go over how to do some songwriting together. So you'll notice that I put that in the description, in the title. Uh, we're going to talk about general songwriting, uh, and I wanted to start off first by drawing your attention to this little tweet that I saw today, because um, we were having a conversation on the Discord about basically if we admit that school, uh, if school ending now and people still graduate, <laughs> if teacher needs school, <laughs> sorry, uh, if school ends right now, and students still graduate, isn't that kind of like admitting that this last semester doesn't matter that much? And I draw your attention to the Star Trek quote, the economics of the future is, are somewhat different. You see, money doesn't exist in the 24th century. The acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. And I want to challenge you guys in this weird period where uh, the main things that drive our society and our lives are kind of up in the air to think of this quote and realize how can I better myself and how can I better the rest of humanity? Because if you do that in these next few months, you will have earned your degree. I guarantee it. You will have earned what you need uh, to be a productive part of society and to be involved in this. So that's how we're going to start our little creative writing club today. Uh, you also notice that my background is the same as the, the theme for the, the channel now uh, and the background was created by one of my students very much thank you for that um, and I'm super excited to have this background and if you guys want to be a part of the creative process of making these things happen then go on to the discord join the discord I would love you guys to be there so that I can get all of your music that you're going to record today what I'm going to give you is a brief rundown of how I make music on my Mac, but this can still apply to how you might do it on a PC um, because I'm going to go over some of the basics of how just to work a, a guitar, how to come up with chords really quick, how to then put that together in a melody and do it off the top of your head. So what are my qualifications for talking about that sort of stuff? I went to a weird school and at that weird school I took a songwriting class and that songwriting class I took every single year that I was in high school. My senior year I remember uh, that one of the students came in they played a song and I would love you guys oh pause for a minute start suggesting songs that we can listen to in the chat I guess the chat might be over there or over there but in the chat so that way we can pull them up and we can talk about song structure in a second but I had a songwriting class, and in my last year of the songwriting class, we had played music, and one student uh, got this CD, and it was the first CD uh, from this band that she was just obsessed with, uh, and it was the Plain White Tees, and the last song on that CD, uh, on that album, was Hey There Delilah. And I remember being in class, and somebody played Hey There Delilah, and at this time, this was a world without Hey There Delilah. So nobody had overheard it yet. And then all of a sudden, everybody in the class was completely quiet. And we knew that we had heard something that was like, this is like a big deal song. This is going to be a big deal song. And the band was like nobody at the time. It was 2005. And they were doing some pop punk stuff. Nothing like what Hey There Delilah was. And so when Hey There Delilah came out, it was mind-blowing. And I remember showing it to my friends and being like, this is a really good song, right? Like, I don't know if I like the Plain White Tees, but this song is really, really good. And now, of course, people have heard Hey There, Delilah a million times. So uh, you've probably been Hey There, Delilah out. Uh, I know that if you are a lady, you've probably been 
you know, serenaded with Hey There Delilah too many times. Yeah. So no, with that being said, I also want to br- bring attention to it is peanut butter hour. So I've got my peanut butter and company white chocolate wonderful. And I strongly suggest that you guys get some peanut butter as well. It's good for the vocal cords. It's good for the soul. So we're just going to start off with a nice spoonful of peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's my jam. Guys, that's heaven in a bottle. Wash you down with some coffee. And I won't eat on stream other than my spoonful of peanut butter. That was so good. So, how do we start writing music? In that class where I first heard Hey There Delilah, we also had a four-track cassette recorder. So it was cassettes that you would get like in a Walkman. You put that in, and then you plugged in your instrument in the same way that I've got this guitar currently plugged in. You plug in your instrument, and you would just play the cassette and record one track, and then rewind, record another track over that. And then once we were all done, we'd have a cassette, and we would put that onto the computer, and that's how we made our songs. So when it comes to how I hear the Cold War kids, I promise. I will give you guys all the music and we'll break it down in a second. I promise you. Cold War kids. Cold War kids. <laughs> so with that said, uh, we would record music in that way. That's the best way for you to do it. Get an instrument whatever instrument, figure out the bare bones for how to get to the point where you're making music. Because for some people, practicing the art of guitar is a very different skill than writing music. And I don't want you guys to get hung up on whether or not you're a good guitarist when you're just using that as a tool to get to where you want to be. So I've got this guitar. Many people have guitars around. If you have a ukulele, uh, a ukulele is another great tool that you could use. But you're going to start with really simple chords, whatever you can do, and you're going to start piecing those together. What I have here on my computer is just QuickTime. QuickTime is the best way to do this. You can have any of the mics that are attached to your computer, and you can run QuickTime and record stuff with QuickTime. Or you can do it on your phone. So as far as how you can record stuff, going from what I started with, <laughs> going from what I started with, that like four tracks and trying to piece everything together and listening to it and like playing along at the same time you have guitar uh you have garage band on your phones you have garage band on any mac computer um and there's similar uh software available online there's similar software available for pc so just getting any sort of software that can help with that get software that records stuff you can just do a voice memo and go from there don't worry about our quality at this point because the quality is secondary to whether or not you're being sincere or being transparent all right so all you need to make a song is really one chord i know that that it's not going to make the you know the world's best song in the whole world in the whole wide world i can't even talk right now but it's going to make a song all you need is a, is to start with one song so we're going to switch over so you guys can see the guitar and ooh, lap that's great sweet let's move this so you can see the coffee and the, and the peanut butter too lovely that was really hurt their ears on that one so here's my guitar my guitar is plugged in it has two plugins for it because it's weird it's wonky uh, but that's the way I like it and I also have what's called a task cam. I'll put a link for this uh, on the Discord if you guys are interested. But a task cam allows me to plug this in and then turns it into a digital input. So my guitar right now is plugged directly. Is everybody able to hear that guitar? Yeah? Sweet. So what we're going to do simplest chord. This is called a C chord. All right? You're starting off on the second string. And on the third fret of that second string, you're using your ring finger. Ring finger right there, one, two, three, all right? So then my middle finger is going to be on the second fret of the third string, and then fourth string is open, and on the fifth string I have my index finger on the first fret. That's a C chord, all right? If I just have that,
I can strum that, and as long as I'm strumming it to a beat, we have something that we can work with. Yeah. Now, when I start playing a C chord, I've basically set the entire key of my song. The C chord, hey, thank you so much, Gold. Yes, on ukulele, the C is open, 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 and then on the third fret on the final string. All right, I can show you that here. That's it on the ukulele. So, I've got my C chord, and if I'm just strumming that C chord, I've set the key of my song to C, which means if I'm thinking of this from a music perspective, that anything that's in that key is free range. I can just do any note on there. So any of those notes are gonna sound okay. It's a matter of putting those notes together in a way that you kinda wanna whistle or something like that. I hit the C chord and I've set the general tone. Ma, ma, right? It's a general muddled tone, but I've got six notes in this chord on guitar, or I've got four notes on the chord on a ukulele. All of those notes are part of the C chord. If I'm looking at a keyboard, that essentially means every one of those white keys, all of those white keys, they're all gonna sound okay. So if I wanna come up with a melody that's all white keys, I can, and all it takes on the guitar is I can sing a song that's all white key melody. Now, I could go through on a keyboard and press all the white keys, boo -boo 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 -boo, and try and find a melody that way. That's totally fine. Or I can just listen for it. All right? What I'm listening for is whether or not this fits and whether or not I can whistle to it, right? Whether or not it's something that I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of like the sound of this. The reason I encourage you to start by listening to it and not necessarily going through on the keyboard is because the keyboard is going to tell you to limit yourself, basically. It's going to say, these are the only notes that work. So play just these notes and go in this sequence. I don't want you guys to be focused on that. I want you to be coming up with, with what you think sounds okay, all right? Because as you play more, you're going to recognize what works and what doesn't work. So I hit that C. All of those notes seem to generally fit, right? I'm starting off maybe with something that I think sounds good with just if I pluck this second string. That's the actual C note. takes right I've at least created if you were there for the creative writing class where we talked about verse chorus verse chorus bridge uh, then I've at least created something that is a structure to a song I've created a verse all right I can start putting lyrics to those dummy lyrics I have da 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 is an example of a dummy lyric or la 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 is an example of a dummy lyric so I'm going in I'm going, da 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 I can sing any sort of thing, right? You heard me singing about peanut butter time. That was all off the top of my head. So now I want some of your input. What do you think I should be singing about? You give me song suggestions. We will write a song right now as we speak. What should we write? What should we write? What should we be writing about? What do you think? So. While you guys are coming up with suggestions and typing that all in, if there are even still people here, okay, um, then I'm going to tell you guys about other notes that you can play or other strings that you can go to from here. So, and I've got this all set up. Within the C key, any of those notes that are in there, I can then go to that specific chord, all right? So I've got my key of C, and one of the ones that people go to the most frequently is F. Now, if you've ever played F on guitar, the official version of F looks like this, where you're barring it, and then you've got your fingers set up in the shape of an E chord. 
We should write about bike rides. We will. I have not a creative writing class, but I have a creative writing club. All right? So we'll do bike rides. All right? So this is the key of F. And this is the chord of F, I mean. If you're doing that on a ukulele, right, that's a little bit easier to hit that key of F. Right? Gold can give us what the ukulele chord is for that. Uh, but... So I've got my key, uh, my chord of F. Chord of C, chord of F, chord of C, chord of F. However, the reason why a song about not knowing what to write, I can do that. A song about how much I hate bar chords. Everyone hates bar chords. That is totally normal. But once you've learned bar chords, you can break through and you can start doing some other stuff. So I've got my crappy bar chord. Right? So here I have a C. What I'm going to do instead of hitting that bar chord is I'm going to cop out. I'm going to do a fake C. And that, all I have to do is move these two fingers, right? Keep them in that same shape, but move them both down one string. That's going to give us most of the pieces of an F. All right, so I'm going to that F key in chord, right? And notice how I'm just waiting until my melody starts to go up, and my song starts to go up. My melody goes down, and they start to go down, all right? But I can just start from scratch, right? I've got my C. progression like that is what makes up a majority of folk music. The reason I'm focusing on folk music is because folk music is going to be a, a pathway for you to start putting together your own songs, right? You can sing all sorts of different types of melody on top of folk music. So, uh, like I just did da 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 I'm riding my bike, I'm riding my bike, I'm riding my bike along. I don't know, I don't know how to write me a song. And now I'm here playing, avoiding these bar chords, walking and cleaning in coffee and <laughs> Right? I just throw all that stuff together. Ba da 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 What's really going to make up the body of my song and separate out my verse from my chorus is just my strum pattern, right? So I have... Now I can still play those same chords and just change my strum pattern. technique called palm muting. My palm is resting on the strings, um, but I'm just changing the way that I'm strumming. Instead of doing one strum, I can do one. And then I'm going to change my melody to go along with that, right? So I, I have my strumming. Right? Now I have just two chords, different strum pattern, and I've created a separation between my verse and my chorus. So, I see Sky's the Limit Studios. You are following my train of thought exactly. I've been saving that G chord, and I love me some G chords, right? So now I'm just writing in the key of C. 
I'm coming up with a melody in the key of C, and I can throw in another chord, like G. Now, G is also a fairly simple chord on the guitar, but it gives me a lot more full sound. These are the same chords that I used to create the, uh, the Big Chungus song that has gotten kind of popular, right? So, uh, the Big Chungus song was just the... It's Big Chungus. It's Big Chungus. Hitler probably saw it. It's a Big Chungus song, yeah. Right? So it's just C, F, and G. Notice how Big Chungus song and... Da -da -da, da -da -da -da, do not sound like the same song. They are in the same key, they are using the same chords, but the way that you put those things together have very different outcomes, right? Think of songs uh, like eggs. When you're cooking an egg, you don't just cook the egg. The way in which you cook it changes everything about the egg. You're gonna, are you gonna get a scrambled egg? Are you gonna get an over easy egg? Are you going to make an egg that's hard boiled, right? Everything that you put into that recipe is the exact same, but the outcome is vastly, vastly different. So when we talk about playing these simple chords, it's really easy for us to be like, man, I should push myself to write more jazzy things or something like that. But the vast majority of pop music is using the same general chords, right? And a secret, if you're going to invest in a guitar, invest in the capo. And the capo gives you that option of basically saying, I'm going to move all of my chords up a couple of keys, right? So now I'm moving it up three steps, and instead of a C, I have, ooh, I have to count for this, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, D, E, E flat, no? Yeah, okay, I embarrassed myself, that was good. So, all right, I've got my uh, capo I can throw on there if I wanna change the way, if that's not comfortable for you to sing at that key, that's the best part about a capo, is you got the same chords, but now you're singing a little higher or a little lower, right? Wherever you're feeling comfortable. So, I've got that G chord, I'm sitting on it, I'm waiting, right? For when I really wanna bust that out. Right? I don't know my fret anatomy better. Um, good. Good. <laughs> Tempo, chord progression, mood, and strum pattern are all aspects that set one song apart from another. Also, genre heavily affects this, right? So I'm giving you a folk background because that's the idea behind folk music. The reason why you see somebody like Woody Guthrie, who's got a guitar that says, this machine kills fascists on it, is because this was used as a tool to create communication between one another. If we can all say the same stuff together, if we can sing along, then we're feeling that thing together, right? So we're using our instrument to create a structure so that we can all join in on it, and that's kind of the basis behind folk music. Uh, this same thing goes for what I would call bedroom pop nowadays, uh, or even vaporwave music. A lot of it is uh, subversive and what people have around their house and they're trying to make the best things that they can with what they have so the general feeling behind it is the same the, the reasoning behind making the music is the same but the way in which you go about it tempo chord progression mood and strum pattern right so i'm saying even without chord progression just having that one chord you can hit the same melody and I'm just playing one chord, right? So the way that I'm using the guitar to back this up, maybe I like the C chord, I can actually make a modified G and just move these two fingers up and focus on my top 
strings, and it will still sound like it's changed up chord, right? So notice how my fingers are mostly staying the same. I'm getting all the benefits of playing a uh, ukulele where I don't have to move my fingers that much, uh, where I'm only focusing on four general strings. However, I'm getting the benefit of how full a guitar sounds, right? Simple as that. So I got my C, I got my F, I got my G, all right? Those are very, very, very simple chords that we can stick to uh, without having to do much finger movement, all right? Again, I'm not teaching you guys how to play guitar, I'm teaching you guys how to put it together into a song that you would like to uh, play for others, right? So, give me some more suggestions of how to make, a, uh, of what to write a song about. Pick me by the freeway, unless that's a band. Kinda want a screamy one. Bubblegum and tandem bike rides, right? So now I'm going to start using some of the skills that I got for songwriting, where I said the verse should be something that modifies the chorus, right? Other way, yeah, that modifies the chorus. So the chorus, as we're repeating it, has a deepening meaning as it goes along. So I have this verse. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da, da -da 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 I got a lot of bike rides. Maybe we're wanting to go outside and ride our bikes. It's a rainy day. Um, so let's make bike rides the chorus. And then different things about bike rides will modify how we view the bike ride. All right? So uh, I'm going to just sing about riding my bike to school. Sing about Jack's films. Everyone loves Jack's film. I'm going to sing about riding my bike to school. All right? Just simple as that. Just... Uh, Something like, uh, hop in the morning, Oof, hop in the morning, right? Uh, hop on my bike in the morning, ride my way to school. Hop on my bike in the morning and ride all the way to school. I'm going to find my way to school by riding on the bike. My hair's blowing and I'm riding on the bike. Right? So that's my verse. I, I'm just talking about riding my bike to school. And then my chorus can be, Ride my bike, I'm riding my bike strong. Ride my bike, I'm riding my bike along. I'm riding my bike, I'm riding and singing a song. I'm riding my bike, oh, I'm riding right along. Right? So, I go into riding my bike. Wake up in the morning, I ride my bike to school. Wake up in the morning, I ride my bike to school. I wake up in the morning and I ride my bike to school. I'm riding my bike to school. I know it's not the best song. We're basically making uh, Baby Shark at this point. But hey, all right. Riding my bike. I'm riding my bike alone. I'm riding my bike. I'm riding and singing a song. I'm riding my bike. And I'm getting along. I'm riding my bike. I'm riding. Now, if I go into another verse, right, I can say, uh, you know, shift the meaning of riding the bike. Woke up this morning, ain't no school to get on to. Everything is shutting down, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I'm going, I don't know where I'm headed to. But I know that I'm riding my bike. I'm riding my bike. I'm riding my bike along, I'm riding my bike. I'm riding and singing a song. Right now, we're starting to develop a story and riding my bike is no longer this thing that I'm doing to go to school. I'm riding my bike to cope without having school, right? So something has shifted in this narrative. Now, it's not a song about riding my bike to school. It's a song about, not to, not, this should be a form of escapism, it's not, but it's a song about coronavirus and, and shutting down the school, right? Uh, and then we can have a, a serious turn, right? So we're going to hit the G chord. Uh, no, we're not going to hit it. We're going to hit the F chord. We're going to go F, G, C, and that's going to be our bridge. And we're going to say something like, uh, Got a flat tire. Don't know what to do. Got a call on my phone. Voice ain't coming through. She's not feeling well. I ain't feeling well too. What do we do? 
Ride my bike, ride my bike and sing a song. Ride my bike, I'm riding my bike and getting along. Ride my bike, even when my tires flat, and I don't know why I do that. Right, so. And now we have a song where somebody's gotten sick and they're being sick and the tire's uh, flat. They have this maybe idea that's building of, uh, oh, he was using riding his bike as an escape, right? So the general structure of the song, I've got just that one chord. I can play that one chord the entire time. If I change the strum pattern for that one chord, then I can change the feeling behind it. I can also change the general vibe behind it by changing my melody or changing the way that I sing. I've gotten a very folky vibe. That's the sort of music that I'm familiar with, right? And to talk about music I'm familiar with, uh, I'll post a link to this song down below, but a song that I wrote that actually was uh, nominated for a Bob Dylan songwriting prize follows the same general structure. Being super folky, uh, I liked bar chords, so I hit that bar chord. And then I just have those same chords throughout the entire song, but the song builds, all right? I'm gonna sing you guys a song. It's called, uh, I Know Who You Love, all right? Uh, if I can remember it. Drove up the California coast on a road curve like a snake. Got lost in those orange groves like an PCH. Don't know how to love, don't even know who I am. Gotta find out who's a drinker. And my mother's been born again. We're singing. I know, I know who you love. And I know, yes, I know it ain't me. And I know, I know who you love. And I know, yes, I know it ain't me. I know the B is flat. Yeah, is that a B flat? It is. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, surprise. I couldn't get into the next verse. Um, now I can't remember it. Oh. Heard your voice breaking through like a green light in the fog. Bay Area bread bowl, baby, I can never get enough. Cold crater lake water and that snowman in June. Never meant to fall in love. Some things you got to do and I'm sick. Now I know, I know who you love. So it was just three chords and we put together this story and it starts off with a guy singing about a road trip and in this road trip he he finishes the sentence by saying uh, I got a father who's a drinker and my mother's been born again I know who you love and it ain't me uh, and so it's very uh, heartbreaking uh, in that first moment and then in the second song you see that he's like falling for somebody right uh, he the, heard your voice breaking through like a green light in the fog. Bay Area bread bowl, baby, I can never get enough. Uh, cold crater lake water. And so he's kind of talking about the scenery of the drive, but he's falling for somebody. Maybe it's California. Maybe it's the drive itself. And you're not really sure. And then it gets all the way up to Oregon and through the trees of the Portland streets, you would fall in love. I wish you both the very best and then move on. But when you think of me, I hope you hear this song. Uh, 
because I'm singing, we're all singing, I know who you love. This idea that this person is constantly seeking out love in every one of the places that they go to, and yet they aren't able to find it, right? So the story develops, even though the chorus remains the same, and the chord progression is still there. One of the things you might have noticed is that I did hit a D minor, which is some uh, music mumbo jumbo, uh, but the D minor chord uh, basically is the minor uh, two and a half. Whoops, if I know what I'm talking about. It's either a minor to an F or a minor to a C, right? And so I basically just uh, subbed out what my chord would be for a minor version of that same chord so that I could get a little bit of scream to it, all right? Uh, I could get a little bit more oomph behind it. It has like a, a sadness behind the, the chord. So when I talk about all of these things, what I want you guys to realize is you messing around with it is the only way that you get to the point where it makes sense. I have songs that I've recorded going back to when I was in high school that are just messing around with stuff. I used to do this thing with my friends where uh, we would record diss tracks and give them back and forth to each other. Uh, and we would do different styles of diss tracks that whole time. So you taking control of this and having fun with it is more important than uh, necessarily trying to make sure that you're a really good guitarist or making sure that you're a really good instrumentalist. Uh, that is secondary. Give yourself a reason to create first and secondarily uh, find how to make it better, right? So if you're wondering, this applies to everything, not just songwriting. Uh, if you want to become a really great chef, give yourself a reason to cook first. I'm going to make myself breakfast every morning. And then when you've made yourself breakfast every single morning and you're sick and tired of the same stinking eggs, you're going to go and you're going to look up how to get better at it, right? But ultimately, you've got to get good at the simple stuff. Some of my favorite musicians, uh, I go back to Bright Eyes. Early Bright Eyes stuff uh, is good because there's a sincerity behind it. There's poetry behind the lyrics, but some of the songs are one chord and the guy's just screaming over the one chord, right? Or, or being disappointed over the one chord. So when we talk about songwriting and how to put these songs together, the special sauce for a good song is you using it as a way to communicate. You going beyond uh, trying to sound a specific way and mostly focusing on how you make the music yourself. Uh, so I just watched a documentary about Lil Peep, uh, rest in peace Lil Peep, uh, who had a really rough life uh, re leading up to uh, basically an overdose and uh, the music that he made was unique because it mixed these elements together that people hadn't mixed before, but they were just the things that he loved about music, right? So there was at one point that I had a song where I mixed in Will Smith lyrics because I loved Will Smith when I was in high school. Uh, I still love Will Smith, let's be honest. Uh, but that Will Smith vibe mixed in with uh, what I was doing at the time, which I was, I was a worship leader. And so it's like, got like these like Christian music vibes and this Will Smith vibe coming together. Uh, it was not good. If I shared it with other people, they would probably be like, Mr. Jackson, why do you do that? But it was good to me. It's what I wanted to create, right? This isn't a tool for clout or for fame. This is a tool for your voice to get out there more, right? Uh, and in the process of doing that, you'll find uh, that you have people that are listening, all right? So uh, the more that you create, the more uh, energy that you put into creating in this moment, the more likely it is that you are going to have people who start listening to what you have to say in the future. Uh, so starting now, you might have a crappy guitar hanging out in your house. You might have a ukulele. All three of the ukulele chords are in the chat. Thanks for that gold. You're amazing. Uh, I want to encourage you guys, get your voice memos. All right. Uh, get onto a computer and start recording just using uh, QuickTime. Uh, next week, I will show you guys some of the actual stuff that I'm using. I guess I can go in here. Yeah, but it's going to be a punk when I try to open GarageBand. This is what I've been saying, guys. I click on stuff and it just doesn't open. 
as it opens. I'm embarrassed. So, uh, we can start doing stuff with GarageBand and messing around with it and actually seeing how to put these things together. But ultimately, it's a matter of you feeling enough confidence to go out there and do it. Um, in this day and age, in the corona age, uh, there's not a lot of options to get out there and to start playing in the live venues. And so what I want you guys to do is record it and send it to me and I'll feature it here. Play first by Cold War Kids. I said I would, I promise. All right. Am I allowed to do that? YouTube. Thanks, Sky's Limit Studios, who was my student last year, but I don't know who you are. Hey, it's peanut butter hour. Ah. Mmm. Oh, that's gross sounding, but it's so tasty. So, what was I going to say? New sounds are available. They're going to copyright strike me, but then I won't be able to make money off of my streams that I'm not making money off of. I got too much going on here. What is it? System audio, muted, unmuted. I might mute the guitar. Oh, Tanner, hey! Welcome to the party, Tanner. I'm very glad you're here. Um, I'm gonna go get my MIDI keyboard from the school as well as my iPad Pro so I can start doing some editing on the iPad because this computer isn't playing nice. But uh, when we have the MIDI keyboard, we can talk a little bit more about how to build a song to make it sound better uh, as Keikoa did for the Chungus song, the big Chungus song. Uh, yep, audio. Connect a guitar bass to Mac. Play through virtual amps. Yes, please. Input, input. Whoops. See, I think that this input for this track is not what I wanted. Connect your guitar bass to your Mac to play and record through. Yeah, that's what I want. Now, input. Input to. I hear sound. My music is not the built-in mic, but that's the button I was looking for. My music input device is the US. Boom, create. Now we got some good stuff. That's not coming in through my system audio though, is it? So now I've got my stuff plugged in and I can actually record a track up here. I can just press the record button uh, and go. Sorry, I sound like Mumford and Sons at this point. Um, and I can go in here and I can play it back. I don't know if it's gonna sound good for you guys, but. Did you make this on uh, GarageBand? I don't know what you're using. The best part about recording in something like GarageBand, first of all, you saw how simple it was when I actually got something uh, that lets me play directly. If I use a MIDI keyboard, 
keyboard, it's a lot easier because I can actually move the individual notes and we can talk about that. But I can also change my guitar and make it a big, chunky, brute sound, right? And now it has a different sound. <laughs> Using GarageBand on your phone is a great way to do it. So we, we should probably talk about how to do all that stuff because most of you guys have phones. Most of you guys probably uh, have software on your phone that can do all of this stuff. I'm old, so I'm here using using GarageBand on here. Uh, but if you heard all of the stuff that Keikoa was doing on uh, the track that he put together, it was flipping awesome. So uh, with that, what did I say I was going to do? Which one? Which song that I'm going to get copyright strike stricken for? Play first by Cold War Kids. All right. Here, have an quality hour. writing Stay. makes your schoolwork better and helps you stand out in the process. I have to like unmute my microphone to talk about this. Uh, we can see uh, it's basically set up in that same way. First by Cold War Kids. You could never get copyright striked in the city, the boy who danced on air because it's sort of obscure Broadway thing. Listen to it. All right, so first by Cold War Kids, you've got a clear verse and then flying like a cannonball, fall into the earth, heavy as a feather when you hit the dirt, right? All of that is gonna be our chorus, right? And I wonder how the chorus is changing as we read this. Cheated and lied, broken so bad, you made a vow, you never got mad, you never get mad. You played the game, though it's unfair. They're all the same, who can compare? First you lose trust, then you get worried. Night after night, bar after club. Dropping like flies, who woke you up on the front lawn? Sprinklers turn on, it's not your house, where'd you go wrong? First you get hurt, then you feel sorry. Flying like a cannonball, falling to the earth. Heavy as a feather when you hit the dirt. How am I the lucky one? I do not deserve to wait around forever when you were here, when you were there first. So you see that there's this uh, obviously complicated relationship that, that he's talking about, and it seems to be self-destructive. And then when we go into the chorus, um, that is summarized as like he feels heavy, falling to the earth like a cannonball, uh, and or when they hit the when you hit the dirt. I don't know if you in this situation refers to him or refers to the person. How am I the lucky one? I do not deserve to wait around forever. There comes a time in a short life, turn it around, get a rewrite, call it a dark night of the soul, ticking of clocks, gravity's pull. First you get close and you get hurried. Notice how this, first you get hurt, then you feel sorry. First you get close and you get hurried, ends up working like a pre-chorus, right? So this repeated phrase and the way that it's changed is our pre-chorus into the chorus and gives us a hint as to how to reinterpret the chorus. Uh, a boy on my own. Listen to a boy on my own. All right. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Cold War Kids has a... So with that, when they went back to the verse, the verse, instead of being like, Da -da 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 
I'm just gonna play it through here. I, I don't have it plugged in anymore. Instead of being da 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 da, da they were just boom, boom, right? And they really stripped it down. Um, I worked with a, a drummer for a little, really long time who every time that he started playing drums, we'd talk and I'd say, hey, oh, at this point we should really bring it back, maybe drop the drums or just do like a, a hard hit. And he was like, no, once the drums start, they stay going. Uh, that's just not true. So um, we were both young. We didn't know what we were talking about. And so uh, absolutely use all of your instrumentation, cut it down if you need to, build it back up, and that's going to build a lot of sound. diminish it at all but a very uh simple sort of setup right we've got our verse and it's really a double verse and then a chorus and then a single verse so verse one verse two chorus verse three chorus bridge chorus chorus close it is a nice bridge i completely agree uh very solid bridge that really like draws everything back down um and they're doing a thing that was really popular in like the 20 teens and uh early uh, the, the 2000s where uh, it was kind of this repeated thing. I'm thinking of the song uh, Transatlanticism by uh, Death Cab for Cutie. Transatlanticism just had this repeating part that almost was like a bridge, but the song went on for 10 minutes and it was just, uh, I need you so much closer. And then the whole song is building. I need you so much closer. And then it goes into the, the final and it's this huge epic thing where all these instruments are going and like, oh, wow. It has a very transcendent feeling to it. And they use that in like a shorthand here with the bridge. I really liked that. So that was cool. Um, could never get copy striked for In the City, The Boy Who Danced on Air. Now, musical theater is a different beast. I'm going to completely be honest with you. Musical theater is a different beast because you're talking about some of the most talented people in a very highly competitive field. And when you talk about the way that songwriting is nurtured in that situation, the boy who danced, oh, it keeps on almost suggesting it and then being like, never mind. Yeah, okay. Who's Troy Iwata? He's gonna be watching this or something. I'm kidding. Nobody's gonna be watching this. There's like all of seven people watching this. So, um, oh, okay. Okay, he's actually the person who's singing it. I feel like a jerk. <laughs> the boy who danced on Aircast. All right, uh, let's see. This is a little preview. I'm gonna have to pay for it. I won't pay for it. But when it comes to musical theater, uh, they're incredibly talented the best music that they possibly can. But when it comes to the interpretation, a lot of people and a lot of vocals are very... Time almost stopped when he first spoke your name The spark in his eyes ignited a flame You had been taught to fit in and obey That change when you city but lovely all right i will check that out uh that's just a brief rundown on how musical theater 
writing goes. I have a friend who is way more into musical theater writing, uh, and it's very much more piano driven. And so we got to get into the nitty gritty of how to overlay melodies and how melodies thematically go together. Uh, yeah, I noticed. I'm sorry, Blue. I noticed it way after the fact, but we figured it out. Um, with that being said, uh, is this the one without the gay strippers? Is it? Is it though? I'm gonna have to check this out, Blue. You always give me the best things to look up. So this makes me very happy. All right. Um, I'm gonna check out The Boy Who Danced on air as soon as we're off stream here. Because if it is about gay strippers, then I probably shouldn't be watching it. PG by Love Sad Kid. Is it rap? Is it hip hop? Is it a five minute advertisement? Oh joy! song at this point so sorry love sad kid for stealing all of your stuff for this educational live stream uh led into the rap first for sony yes they were completely agree uh a lot of really good stuff in that song i think that the general structure of it uh is that hip-hop structure which um one of the big takeaways that i got from uh I just got little peep, little peep's name uh, from the little peep documentary was this idea that hip hop is the new punk movement and punk isn't just an aesthetic. It's not just uh, a type of musical genre. It's the meaning behind it. And so I absolutely agree. Uh, bedroom pop, hip hop, that sort of stuff is the new punk movement, the new indie movement. And the reason that is, is because it has... A simple breakdown. I can just play the same track over and over again and rap over that or uh, teach me how to use Studio One. Oh, yikes. Okay. Uh, I have to get, I'll have to get that all set up for next time. Um, but so this idea of just using this track that's repeated over and over again, this is how people like Lil Dicky got started was by sampling other people's beat and then rapping over it. What you're showcasing is your voice and what you have to say. And uh, you're using the music as a way of delivering that information. And so that's ultimately what you have to focus on. We'll get into, I mean, I showed you like my folksy stuff with this guitar and how to do it from that perspective, but we'll get into how to actually uh, play with a MIDI keyboard and come up with beats that are very simple. Uh, and then that way you guys can create your own beats or goof around with that. Here's what I would strongly suggest as we come to the end of this stream. 
you guys that have stuck with it for this whole thing, there's probably about seven of you, uh, have the time, have the skills, have the connection now that you can start making some really good stuff. There's a really cool band. Uh, this is another kind of reference to Death Cab for Cutie called the Postal Service. And the Postal Service was named such because they sent their tracks back and forth through the mail. And they never actually met in person, except for when they showed up for their for first tour. So you have an opportunity to do that sort of stuff. Uh, I know Keikoa is incredibly talented when it comes to this stuff uh, and was lovely and amazing in putting together the Big Chungus song for me. Oof, lovely, so good. Uh, but you guys are all capable of doing that. Uh, writing lyrics, putting together beats, doing the things that you guys like to do the most. So I strongly suggest that you get together with each other and to do that, go down and join the Discord. Uh, get a part of the Discord, maybe even uh, create a separate channel so that you can talk about how to make music together. All right, uh, we'll keep on doing this sort of stuff. Tomorrow, what we're gonna talk about in the stream for peanut butter hour is gonna be like general life advice. So things like uh, how you pay your taxes, how you uh, get your first apartment. Uh, that's what I asked students what they wanted to learn about the most and that's what most of them said. Uh, it's really quite simple stuff, but that's what we'll be talking about tomorrow. And Friday is gonna be like a normal Friday. I'm gonna be gone over the weekend and we'll come back on Monday. Uh, I hope you know that I appreciate all of you guys. You're lovely and amazing. This has been a freaking blast. Let's get a word doc together and figure out how to listen to some music together and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, 10 out of 10, what is it? Stomp your feet, clap your lap, everybody say quack. Quack. And that's a stream.